better enemy inside of here. And I'm kind of getting sick of continuously having to reload our enemy all the time. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to right click on our enemy here. We're going to save branch as scene which is what we should have been doing all along. We're going to double click in our scenes folder and then we're going to make it an enemy.tscn. You'll see that he no longer has his children inside of here or anything like that. And if I select him, I push control D and then I move it over, control D and I move it over and then I save and then I hit this little like play, you know, action thing. Oh yeah, we talked about this before with bullets. I forgot until I did that. Um, we go into here. We're going to actually zero this out inside of here because we don't want him to be in a random location inside of here. Anyways, we're going to go back into our enemy scene over here and when we make a change into him right here, it's going to happen everywhere, which is simpler and makes it so that we don't have to continuously destroy our work, redo it, and destroy our work and redo it. So anyways, let's open this up, go down to where the sprite is at, open up our art, and we're going to make a simple enemy. You know what, we're just going to go full on large enemies. Big. Anyways, we'll stop modulating them because they're super red now. So if we go over to visibility and we revert back the modulations there. And then we're also going to go to animation and we're going to make it so that there are two H frames so that the only single enemy shows up. We're going to go to the collision shape and we're going to make it shrink down to the size of our enemy here. We're going to make sure that the collision shape is actually, and let's undo that box right there. We're going to make sure that the collision shape actually encompasses the entire enemy and maybe a little extra so that it's simpler to hit. We're also going to, and I should have done this first, we're going to rotate this guy 90 degrees. Sorry, I did that wrong. He's actually facing down, so we need to actually go negative 90 degrees, which is like this. So they face that way, or that's equivalent to doing 270 degrees is the same thing. You can do it either way. That way when the enemy rotates 90 degrees, he'll actually be looking down, which is what we want. And then we're going to move this collision shape over to the right a little bit. Mm, I think that's pretty good for what we wanted. Now we want the enemy to actually be facing our player at all times. So let's go ahead and make that actually happen. So let's set the rotation equivalent to the Dir dot angle. And as you can see, the enemies now face off on us and look pretty good. Although they're very shaky. I did some research and found out that there's a function that will actually fix all this for us. So anything that is inside the physics process in the test shooting script, delete between dir and move and slide, because uh, I'm going to edit out a bunch of stuff. And then you're going to actually use a method uh, function called look at, like so. And then all you have to do is feed in a position for it to look at. And we're going to actually just say player.position, like so. And then if we push play at this point right here, we'll actually get it so that all our problems are actually fixed because it will just continuously look at our player like that without any wiggling or anything like that. Now I'm going to go in here and hit those boxes, control D, actually those boxes don't matter because it's a scene, and we're just going to move this over, move this over, and now I have three enemies that will do exactly the same thing and all follow and not have any rotation issues whatsoever with our player, which is good. All right, that'll end it for this video. Please like, subscribe, comment. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. Have a great day, guys. Bye.